Hey everyone, Norm from Tested here at Monster Palooza, Son of Monster Palooza 2019. This is a exhibit here curated by the Copper Gallery. And one of the artists, Ben, we love your work of so striking. We had to find you and chat with you about some of these pieces. So tell, tell us about these animatronic creatures. Uh, this is a bird that I uh, created and it's just kind of a, a mixture hybrid of different realistic birds that I liked but he's not really following any one particular bird kind of like took some essence of like hornbill and uh, other other uh, other birds and just kind of mashed it in together to make sort of a dinosaur looking creature the finish on it is really spectacular because there's all the those fur there's feathers the legs here you, you sculpted everything yeah, yeah. and then you also designed the mech system inside here yeah, yeah. Uh, what was your thinking for like its movements and how uh, much you want to move like what it, what is the story so on this one my challenge actually this was the first one where I was trying to shoot for making all the movement just based on one motor where it's more like an automaton mm -hmm. where there's only one motor that drives all the functions a lot of the other stuff I'd made before like this guy is multiple servos in mm -hmm. different spots and that was kind of what I was used to doing but then uh, after kind of Seeing and being introduced to the idea of automata, I started wanting to make a piece that where everything just ran off of one motor. So that was the challenge on this one was just to try to see how many different functions I could get. Oh, so I see the motor one. there. So, there's a cam there. So it's really the elegance of designing everything off of one rotation, yeah. one speed, yeah, essentially. And in the end, I kind of like it better, even though it's it's simpler. It's less movements than this. There's actually less parts to replace, and it's more durable. It lasts a lot longer. Whereas the servo motors burn out a little more often, I have to replace, unless I'm using really expensive ones, but it's, it, th these definitely uh, last a lot longer because it's just a motor running at a continuous speed and the cams are doing all the, all the different movements, so. There's a lot of axes of movement here. I'm just looking at the head as you're talking and you got the neck movement, the tilt, it goes left and right as yeah. well. Yeah, it's, you can see some of, some of the cams are on the other side too, so uh, see so there's some yeah. of the... Wow. And so some of those are pulling, like that's pulling actually just for his leg. There's another one that's pulling on one for this little crest here. It'll, it moves every once in a while when it comes around to the right spot. Oh yeah, Obviously there it goes. goes. Yes, yes. Yeah. So actually, yeah, that one is linked to this right here. So I can kind of trigger, oh, that's, oh wait, that's his head turn and this is his crest. But, Exhibits some of the yeah. best, the, my favorite parts of looking at animatronics is that like, the more you look at it, mm -hmm. the more alive it becomes because yeah. all that extra thought it's not just at a glance, but then in the background, it's like, it's, it's, you, you kind of read it as being alive. Yeah, and he actually shares this little crest on his head. It's actually paper, and it was originally stolen from, it's actually the same thing as what his crest is. So his, this actually happened first, where I, when I was making him, this didn't even exist as the, in the sculpture. I was putting him in this book, and when I started to cut out the center of the book, I had the center of the pages from the book on this binding, and when you moved it around, it looked really cool. And I was like, how could I have that be a part of it? So I just took those center pages from the book and made that become part of his head. And then you can see it's just, uh, it's just kind of mechanized on a little strap that keeps it doing that, right. that movement there. And then you see gravity does part of the work for you, yeah, right? Yeah. A little swaying, get some free yep. animation there. And then after I did that, then it was funny because everybody that saw it thought that these were feathers. And they said, that, oh, I love the way the feathers move on his head. And I was like, oh, they're actually the pages. But then I was like, oh wait, I have a bird. Why don't I add feathers to his head the same way? So it's just the same kind of technique, but applied to something different. <laughs> and I, I love this one. I, I saw the eye just the move dilating. here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the little, little dilating pupil in there. Wow. This one more, uh, a little more advanced, a lot more servo motors right here? Yeah, yeah. How, yeah, many, how many different motors are you using? So he's got uh, one that does the body turn and then one that does the head tilt, then the one for the head crest, one that turns the eye, and then the one that does the dilating on the eye. Mm. Mm. More fleshy, of course, allows yeah. you to get some stretch in yep. there, and so yeah. it's all considerations you put in as you're doing the sculpting yep. and Yeah, he's all casting. silicone that has to, the challenge was kind of this transition of feathering out silicone into what looks like burned paper, and then it actually is real paper, and trying to find that spot where it hides and feathers into it, and, it actually has one clean break at one point, so I can access all the mechanism. Because that's part of it too, is trying to think of how 
how am I going to change out parts later? If, if I have to change the servo motor, it has to be really easy that somebody else could just take a screwdriver and unscrew it and put a new one in there. And it's like, would be easy, like changing batteries or something. So it's not, not, uh, not the end of the world if one dies. It's just buy a new one and install it. <laughs> Do you like doing the more high concept stuff where you're tying in the display with the character? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I, I like. I, mean, I like making static pieces too. Like, like this this one here. I've always, for for years, everything I made was all static. And then, after kind of seeing how more and more animation was done, obviously I had the urge to want to integrate more animation into stuff I was making. So it was always, always. An, but now I'm kind of getting back to like, you know what? Not everything has to move. I want to just make some static things that look nice again. Because I do get kind of over focused in making it move, and then at the very end, I'm like. I just spent three months building this mechanism and then like two weeks doing the art on top. I kind of want the ratio to be a little different. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like where I do like more of the art side. That's that's what I like more. That's actually what I do more in my day job is more of the artistic side, but always working with the mechanical side teases me and makes me want to go deeper into that on my own stuff too. So yeah, it's, flex it's, it's those different to, creative muscles yeah. and you're all, all you're doing is creating creatures. Yeah. Yeah, so you have a, a dragon there, a static <laughs> dragon, but again, gorgeous and doesn't need to move to read as something that's alive and, yeah. and has a personality. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, definitely. That was, that was actually another, one of my first pieces that I did after I was, did a whole bunch of animated stuff. That was what, what was my goal. I was like, I just need to make something big that looks cool and not even worry about movement. And that was the first one I did and then after doing the birds, I was like, all right, I'm going to make some static birds now that just look cool and I'm not worrying about movement for a little bit to take a relaxing break from always trying to integrate the whole picture as a... But I do like the idea of like, like having this little moment where you look at something and it's like you're looking at just a living thing that's just there and all sealed up, no, no showing of... Like, so you can kind of, if you saw it somewhere out in the forest, you'd just believe, oh, there, there's a bird I haven't seen before. So, so that's kind of the goal I go for when I make animals, but obviously this was a different direction, but. They're both mesmerizing. But, uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Ben. It's a pleasure oh, thank to you. meet you. And uh, thanks for sharing your art with us. I oh, know, thank you very much. <laughs> hey everybody, Norm from Tested here at one of my favorite events of the year. This is Son of Monster Palooza in Burbank, California. And companies like Immortal Mass bring some awesome products, well like these wearable silicone masks. They have incredible creatures and we got to go behind the scenes with Immortal Mass, where sculptor Andrew Freeman showed us the making of this mass. He sketched it out, sculpted it in clay, and we documented the entire process in virtual reality for 180 VR. That's available to view now in our tested VR app in the Oculus Store to view in Oculus Quest and Oculus Go. And it's so cool to see this mask now in the silicone flesh when it originated from that clay. We hope you enjoy it and check it out.